let's take a look and see how we can style these menu sections that we added earlier. First, let's enter the page builder and let's style the breakfast section first. The first thing I'm going to do is head to the item layout tab and add a bit of spacing between the menu items. Next, let's have a look at the different layout options that we have available to us. The first and default option is image left, which is the one that we see currently. We can also choose image right, image above, poster image, which will overlay the information on the top of the image. And we can also go for no image at all. For now, for this layout, let's stick with image left. We can set some padding for each menu item. And this is a bit more obvious once we set some background color. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm gonna do that. Let's head across to item styles and choose a background color of red. And you can see the padding between the image, the text, and the edge of the red box. Now I'm just doing this to show you that this is possible, uh, but for now I'm going to switch this back to a transparent background and I'll remove the padding as well. The next options that we have are the image options. So we can choose a different image size. Generally, it's best practice to choose the smallest image size that you can get away with, and this is for speed reasons. Currently, we have the medium-sized image that we are using, and for a screen size of this width, I think that's absolutely fine. But do bear in mind that when you're using Beaver Builder and you have the settings pinned to the left or the right, the width of the content that you see might be slightly less than once you published it. A good way of Checking that out is to collapse the settings like so, just to make sure that the image size that you selected is okay for the width of the content. You'll see that the next setting is max image width. And this is just to make sure that the width of the image doesn't go any further than 50%. So if I was to set a large image size, you'll see that although that the image size should be at least 10, 24 pixels wide, it doesn't span any further than 50% of the width of the item. If you'd like to set a border radius on the image, you can do so here. And this is useful if you have perfectly square images and you want to turn them into circles. You could do that by adding a large border radius here. And because we've got rectangles, you can see that it's not quite a circle. Next up, we can add a border to the image. For example, we could add a solid border and make this a certain color. And that might be the effect that you're looking for. But for now, I'm gonna set this to none. We now have the option of aligning the information and the information is the menu item name, the description and the price. So we could align it to the center, to the right, but we'll stick to the left. We can also vertically align the information and this is useful if the image is much larger than the information that you're displaying. In this case, we've got pretty small images, so it's not gonna take effect, but you might choose top, middle, or bottom there. Finally, in the item layout tab, we can set the item information padding. And to reiterate, the information, the item information, is the item name, the description, and the price. And you'll see that that's quite close to the image, so we might set some padding on the left here, just to space that out a bit. Next, we can jump across to the styles. As we saw earlier, we can set a background color, which we reset to transparent for now. We can also set a border radius on the entire menu item, and we can also set a border should we want to. Next, we can start setting some typography settings. First, we can set settings for the item name. So let's go ahead and change this. And there we go, we've changed the font, the color, and the size of the menu item name. Let's change some settings for the description and price now. And for now, we'll leave this breakfast section as we designed it here. If you are happy with the design that you've created, you can now easily clone this module and simply choose a new menu section. and then all of your styles will be retained. For now, I'm just gonna go and delete this dessert list, and I'll show you a slightly different style for the main courses here on the right. 
Firstly, what I'm going to do is change the layout to no image. So you'll see that we just have the information. We have the menu item name, the description, and the price. I'm going to set a bit of space in between each menu item. This time, I'm only going to set 10 pixels. Just quickly, I'm going to publish this page. And I'm going to use the Chrome Inspector to find the Beaver Builder node ID. So we're looking for the module ID. And to do that, we're just going to hover over the different items that we see in the inspector until we find the module. So you'll see here that we have FL module, and this is the container of the module that we've added to the page. And you'll also see here that we have a data hyphen node property with the ID of this module. So I'm just going to double click on that and copy that to the clipboard using Command C. If you're on Windows, that'll be Control C. You'll also notice here that we have a class of FL hyphen node hyphen, and then the same node ID that we've just copied. And you'll see what we're gonna do with that in just a second. I'm gonna reopen the page builder, and this time I'm gonna to head to the tools menu in Beaver Builder at the top left. I'm gonna choose layout, CSS, and JavaScript. So with the node ID still in my clipboard, I'm gonna type dot FL hyphen node hyphen, and then paste in that ID. What this is doing is going to select the entire module, but what we actually want to do is hide the description that we see here. So we need to find out the CSS class of this description. So what I'm going to do is jump across to the Better Food menu settings, and you'll see that here that we have an example CSS section. So if we scroll down a bit, you'll see that we have some global CSS styles, some menu filter CSS styles, but here we have the menu section CSS styles. So we're looking for the item information description. So if we scroll down a bit, you'll see that we have item description just here. So I'm just going to copy this CSS selector and head back to Beaver Builder. I'll put a space after the previous selector that we typed in and just paste that in and use the curly brackets to start writing our styles. And to hide the description, we're just going to use display none. And you'll see immediately on the left that we just now have the menu item title and the price. The next thing I want to do is line up horizontally the title and the price so they're on the same line. So to do that, I'm going to use the same node ID or the same CSS selector that we used before, just below here. And this time we're looking for the wrapper, the container of these two items here. So again, I'm going to jump back to the food menu settings and we'll have a look and see what we've got available. Now, in this case, you'll see here, um, just above the name, description and price, we have a div which holds the dish information. So this contains the item title description, which we've hidden and the price. Uh, so this is the one we want. This is the container. So I'm just going to copy this selector here, head back to Beaver Builder, and with a space after the previous CSS selector, I'll just paste that in. So that's the information inner container. We'll use the curly brackets again and go to the next line. To line these up, what we need to do is use a CSS property called display flex. And you'll see now that they're on the same line, but they're bunched up together. I want to put the price on the right hand side and keep the item name on the left hand side. So to do that, I'm going to use justify content and I'll use the space between property. And just like that, you can see that price is now on the right, but the item title is on the left. So I'm going to save that. That's all the custom CSS that we need to write. And I'll jump into the settings form for this section. Now, simply, I'm going to apply some basic typography settings to this module. Then I think we're pretty much done. So first I'm going to set some styles for the item name. And next I'm going to set some styles for the price. So we can skip all of the settings for the description because that's obviously hidden. And this is quite a common layout for a lot of menus. And it looks kind of clean. So I'm going to go ahead and publish that. Okay, so I've covered all of the different 
design styles that we can add using Beaver Builder and a bit of custom CSS as well in there. Now, although we're not going to win any design awards for what we've just created, hopefully it will give you an idea of the options that are available to you within Beaver Builder. So you can style the menus in exactly the way that you need. For some further examples, head to betterfoodmenu.com and you can just click on any of these here. And this, this selection is likely to change and expand over time. So keep coming back and seeing uh, what examples are here. And that wraps up this video. In the next one, we will have a look at how we can style a single dish module. See you then.